I debated whether or not to show you in the inside of this because they're difficult to get apart, but I will. I will go ahead and do it. Why not? There are three tabs. There's a tab here, and a tab there, and a tab there, and you have to bend it and get it out. And as you can see, this one's been taken apart. Some light on there. There's some scratches. This one's been taken apart a few times throughout the decades. Um, I've only taken it apart once to, to rebuild it. I'll show you how to do that. You just press it in, kind of pull up on it. You do the same thing to the next side, being careful not to, to bend this cap. And there it is. It comes up like that, just a ring. And then you have your, your main drag plate, the, what it rubs up against. Now guys, this is uh, this is one of the old timey asbestos washers. To, to get this with the new Duradrag gear, Duradrag drag system that Penn puts out now, you have to replace the drag cam, you have to replace that plate in here. Um, the shaft is also different because of the gear that's built into this housing. Um, so you have to replace the, the, the shaft. It's about a $90 fix to replace this old timey drag system. Uh, but you know what? This one works. It, it's in good shape. It was in good shape when I got it. I'm not going to get the guy to spend $90 because he sold this reel for $75. Uh, so this, for this particular job, I'm not even going to recommend that he consider changing drag. It's a dry drag system. No grease, no oil. If you do, it will slip and you will ruin this drag system. Make sure your drag washer is centered. Put this back on top like so, get your cap. Now, you've got to press this in. Press against that spring, push this tab in, or down I should say, and then in into its retaining groove in there. And then do the same thing with this one, push it in and down. This is a, a pain in the tail kind of job. I try to do it quickly because then I don't have to think about it. As long as we're in, I'm cleaning up here, spreading around the grease. Uh, cool thing you can do, get some grease like this, put it on the inside of this gear so when that shaft is pushing up and through uh, that gear chamber, I should say, it will slide through easier. Remember there's a bearing in there, don't impede the bearing. Wipe off the excess grease here. Okay guys, so we were going through this international here and we're about ready to get to the point where we can put it back together, but a couple things I had to file down the sides of this gear here. There were pieces of metal hanging off where it had worn, so I'm just making sure that it's all dry now. A couple of things you can do at this point before you put it back together that will ensure the lifespan of this reel, and that is to clean out the inside here. And I'm just going to clean out a little bit just to show you. All I'm going to do is wipe it out, and I would do this all around normally. Just wiping out the grease. You can put a degreaser in there if, you, if you're confident about it. <clears throat> and then you're just going get to get some grease like this. And what I do is I just rub it, rub it in there. So the next thing that you can do uh, when you are putting this reel back together after you put a nice little coating of grease there, we're going to prepare the spool. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of grease in here. This is where your anti-reverse contacts these little divots in the side. So that's properly aligned. We are ready to reassemble this reel. Now we're going to do it. From here it's really easy to, to clean your spool. We can start with this piece. And remember, this little nub is going to go inside the bearing. And you make sure this lined up. Make sure that your anti-reverse pins in here are lined up on top of their springs. And they are. And this is going to line up and go inside that bearing. There we go. And you can sort of hear those anti-reverse clickers. And the next thing we need to put in is our shaft. Now this is the shaft here. To the shaft, all you gotta do is make sure that there's plenty of grease on the teeth, that there's enough grease to uh, allow this shaft to slide through the bearings pretty easy on the mid part. And we want grease on our pinion gear part. So this shaft here, specifically the thin part, goes through this top bearing, there we go, into the hole that gets in the bottom of the spool. 
that has teeth around the compartment. Next we're going to focus on the inside of our side plate here, lathering this on here. But at the same time you don't want so much that, I mean it's going to be getting in the way. This gear is going to fit into this compartment there just like that. It's going to fit down in here just like this. Really that's everything. So now we're going to get our main part here. And this is very important, so pay attention. You'll notice we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, and then two close together, two close together. I'm going to put our anchor in there also. And now I'm just going to flip this over perfectly, match up the shaft that goes through the spool with the bearing that's on this side and then our gear here should match up with the pinion gear and it does okay so once you have your side plate mounted up here and you have it just right <clears throat> I'll show you the configuration for the screws we have three short screws and we have three long screws now these three screws are with the wider heads uh, go to hold the plate on for the uh, preset. So these shorter screws go in the three holes that match up to the real foot. Okay. Your long screw is going to go in just like that. And just like that. Okay. Now the only screw left is this one here, into the post. <clears throat> so you have this one here and this one here into this post. Remember that are reserved for your drag rail. So the only one left is this one here that you have to do. So the, the front two for the anchor, the back three for the real foot, and the one on the right side if you have the anchors facing you are the ones that you have to worry about. All right, very nice. Put a little bit of grease up underneath the drag preset, and then we're going to go ahead and put the plate on. First of all, our uh, drag lever. And remember, I set it to free spool, uh, so it's going to go back on at free spool, just like that. And then we're going to line up our preset knob. So we're not want to do it, but we're on. And remember, we had these three screws that hold it in. And they're all the same, they have wider heads than the other ones. Alright. Very nice. And the last thing we're going to do before we put on our handle is we're going to put on our drag lever rail. And I always start by putting in this centerpiece and just getting it started with my finger. And that seems to hold it on pretty good, just like that. Now you can move it around and do whatever you want. These little spacers, you have to be careful of. Uh, to get them in there just right, I sometimes will use tweezers. Some people have shaky hands. I don't, but I found that helps for the people who, who have shaky hands. You can see I'm just going to set it in there just like that. Pretty simple. Now, you have two screws that hold in your drag rail. One is short, one is very long. The way to remember this, you're screwing directly into the frame here. You're not screwing into a post. And so, if you think about it, this one is way too long to screw into that frame because it's going to go straight through, see? It's going to go straight through the frame, and so this one goes on the side we're screwing into your post and that way you have plenty of space for it. That's a good way to remember that. Okay, now the middle screw. Be careful with this one, that one likes to strip out so don't put it way too tight. And then the last one goes into the frame. And the last thing we get to do to this reel is to put the handle back on. First you have your washer that goes on here. And you have your handle, just like so. And then you have your 
last bolt. Which, remember, it always helps to have a pin standard wrench for these nuts, for these bolts. And you're just going to twist it around just like so. In order to get that locking plate to work, you have to fit the middle or the valley between two of the teeth to line up with that hole. So that's, that's a pretty tight fit to make that happen. But they seem to all do it just fine uh, if you press hard enough. So that works just fine. Now the plate should fit on just right. And it does. And now you can always tell uh, if you do mess something up, it'll mess the whole reel up. It'll, it'll run it all off. But we have a free spool. Throw a drag up. We're going to put it right at strike. We should have right around at least 10 pounds of drag at strike to have free spool um, is good enough. This one, I can't even turn it. And it spins just fine. Uh, another thing is your clicker. And then when you get all through and all done, you can get some WD-40 and spray it on this rag here and just go through and just wipe it all off. And that's how you take this reel apart. That's how you do service on it. Any parts you need to replace in this reel through what I have explained, you can get to them from what I did today. Thank you guys for watching. This has been a production by the Real Clean Service Center. My name is Matt. Uh, if you can go to my website, www.realcleanservices.com, that's R-E-E-L, and that's where you can find all my information about services, pricing, location, contact information, as well as my Facebook page, which you can go and like if you like. I appreciate you watching. Have a good day and tight lines.